I'm Rob Hartzer with San Antonio North Community Group. Thank you for the opportunity to discuss risk factors for poor functional improvement after reverse arthroplasty for massive rotator cuff tears without arthritis. Our disclosures are seen here. Many thanks to a great team in Tampa that have collaborated on this project. Massive rotator cuff tears are a difficult problem for patients and surgeons. Modern reverse shoulder arthroplasty is a relatively novel technology that has had success in many indications. But currently, the use of reverse and massive cuff tears without arthritis is controversial. Our group had previously published successful outcomes for reverse or massive cuff tear, with most patients experiencing good pain relief and improved function. Yet our group and others had noticed that certain patients do not experience much functional improvement after this operation. Therefore, our purpose was to determine risk factors for poor functional improvement after this operation to improve patient selection and preoperative counseling, thus continuing to evaluate the reverse as a novel surgical innovation. The study was a retrospective case control analysis we define case patients as those having an improvement of one or less in the SST score, as this is below the minimal clinically important difference for SST and rotator cuff disease. Potential risk factors for this outcome were identified in the literature prior to data collection. Defining the case group was not straightforward. We chose the SST score for this purpose because it's a validated score and primarily asked about shoulder function. It has been used previously to define unsatisfactory shoulder arthroplasties. An analysis of prior data from our group showed that this score reliably identified patients who had poor functional improvement by other outcome measures. The following risk factors were selected from the literature prior to data collection. All had previously been associated with poor outcomes after shoulder or other joint arthroplasties. To be included in the study group, we required two-year follow-up after massive cuff tear treated with reverse with no preoperative glenohumeral arthritis according to the model classification. Patients were excluded if they had prior fracture, infection, or open surgery. 74 patients were included. Patient demographics were unremarkable. Average follow-up was about three and a half years. 13 patients were identified as cases with poor functional improvement and 61 served as a control group. The histogram shows the change in SST score for cases on the left and controls on the right. Did defining the case group by SST score truly select a group of patients with poor functional improvement? As seen here, the case patients also had inferior improvements in ASES scores, range of motion, final self rating function, and they were less satisfied than the control patients. With upper extremity neurological dysfunction and deltoid weakness, there was 18 times increased odds for poor functional improvement. Patients with this risk factor were identified by both history and a corroborating physical exam. With high baseline SSD score, there was also an 18 times increased risk odds for poor functional improvement. With young age, there was about nine times increased risk for poor functional improvement. Previously, our group and others have reported that lack of pseudoparalysis was a risk factor for poor improvement after this operation. In this study, lack of pseudoparalysis was not associated with poor functional improvement. Also of note, prior arthroscopic rotator cuff repair was not associated with poor functional improvement. A multivariate regression analysis showed that these risk factors were independent predictors of poor functional improvement. It should be noted that these rotator cuff tears were considered to be irreparable based on preoperative characteristics and repair was not attempted. Whether operative repairability can be predicted remains a controversial topic. To be cautioned against using these risk factors as a contraindication for reverse or assuming that they're causative, many of the case patients had good overall pain relief and, and satisfaction with the operation. We believe that this study has practical implications for the shoulder surgeon. First, it emphasizes the need for careful history and physical exam to seek out neurologically mediated deltoid weakness, which can be difficult. It also suggests that for younger and more highly functioning patients, care should be taken prior to offering a reverse. Careful counseling and consideration of alternative treatments are warranted for these patients. For certain of these, an attempt at joint preserving surgery should be considered prior to performing a 